Mary Risley from San Francisco. I have a cooking school called Tante Marie's Cooking School, and today I'm going to show you how to make pastry. Simple pastry. If you've been afraid of pastry all these years, uh, you don't know how to do it, watch me. You can do it in seven minutes. It's not hard. It's really easy. And uh, uh, so I'm, I'm fulfilling requests from people to do pastry. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the pastry on top of some caramelizing apples. And then we're going to bake it in the oven and turn it over onto a plate. And that's called a tart tatin, a caramelized upside down apple tart. Doesn't that sound good? So even if it's your first time making pastry, it's going to be turned upside down anyway. So who cares? OK, so follow me. And if you don't get all the instructions clearly, uh, you can go to tantemarie.com and find the recipe for tart tatin on there. This is all-purpose flour. I'm using a one-cup measure to fluff up the flour. This is wrong. Don't pat the flour down. Rather, fluff it up. So I'm fluffing up the flour and, and putting a flat knife or a spatula across the top. That's exactly one cup of flour. Okay, and now I'm going to do two-thirds of uh, the same way. Fluff up the flour, make it nice and flat, and there's a one-third and two-thirds. The flour has already been sifted, so you're just fluffing it up to kind of give it a little bit of volume. Now I'm going to add a tablespoon of uh, sugar, tablespoon of sugar, same thing, we're just measure it equally. And I've got flour, sugar, and I'm adding an eighth of a teaspoon of salt or a pinch of salt. You just guess at it, doesn't matter. And um, I'm going to cut in nine tablespoons of cold butter. So the trick to making good pastry is you cut the fat into the dry ingredients. So fat could be Crisco, um, uh, lard, but I like butter the best. So I'm cutting my butter into my flour and sugar mixture. And the reason I use this little gizmo here, people have used their hands for years, but a lot of people's hands are too hot for pastry making. The trick to making good pastry is to keep the butter cold. Every once in a while I take the lumps here and just uh, push them back and go after the big lumps. And this is a way of keeping your hot hands off of the butter. Okay, I'm cutting in my cold ingredients to my flour. Now watch this. I shake it up and down, and the big lumps come to the top. And that's when I know to go after the big lumps. Okay, if you don't have a pastry cutter like this, as I said before, you can use two kitchen knives. When you do it with your hands, you want to do the fingers only, and you go like this. Do 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 do. You just quickly drop it. So I'm going to break a egg into a little bowl like this. You can save the white for something like meringues and three or four tablespoons of cold water. Putting the a tablespoon under the faucet doesn't work very well. It's better to do like this because it's not moving. So I got three tablespoons of cold water. I got a little fork here. We just mix it together. The egg is kind of acts as glue that helps to the, the juices from running through a pie. I make the uh, well in the center of my dry ingredients. I put in my liquid in ingredients and then I'm going to with my fork straight up and down just move it around to moisten basically you're moistening the flour you don't want the flour to mix with the butter you want the butter to stay cold now after you put a fork straight up and down I want to put my fingers and with the fingers of one hand push it like this okay the fingers of one hand push it out until you get a kind of a rough ball, and then you turn it onto a board like this. Now I'm going to do what the French call fraisage. I'm going to knead it with the heel of my hand just to get the fat and flour and water to mix together. And it's really going to end up being, I'm smearing the little uh, bits of cold butter between strands of flour and water. Do you see how this mixture is kind of coming together a little bit? So here's a wrong way to do this. And push it together like a snowball. You want to push it quickly. If you snowball it, the butter will melt into the dry ingredients. Then you'll have a tough dough. OK, so I'm going to do it again. Doo -doo. I'm swearing. Doo -doo. I'm smearing my cold butter. This is looking really good. 
Okay, look what I've got here. I have a kind of shaggy mass. The butter's still cold and every, everything's kind of cold. And I'm going to uh, push it together one last time. And kind of, you can knead it just a couple of times like bread. And see there's some little dribbles outside? Don't worry about it. Now I'm going to put it in wax paper and uh, we'll put it in the middle. And then I'm folding it up and squeezing it together like a patty cake and putting it in the refrigerator for 20 minutes. So now we need the apples. I have a um, Granny Smith apple here that I bought at the supermarket. I've, got, I've already cut up four of them, peeled and cut up. And now I'm going to peel the last apple. So this is my uh, big fat chunks. Don't worry about whether they're even, they look good. They're good. It's gonna be an upside down tart anyway, so. Okay, now. I, this could be an iron pan, this could be a copper, it could be a special pan made for tart tatin, but uh, is, I'm just using this size pan here. I'm putting four tablespoons of butter on the bottom of the pan, okay? Then I'm going to put four tablespoons of sugar on the bottom of the pan. That's what makes caramel, butter and sugar. There, so that's pretty easy. Now I'm going to pack in my four big large apples and spread them all around like that. And now goes on another four tablespoons of butter. And you may go, oh, so much butter. Can I do it with less butter? Oh, can I leave out the sugar? Just don't eat so much. It's uh, making stuff that doesn't taste good because it has less butter or sugar is ridiculous. So we've got four tablespoons of butter, four tablespoons of sugar. I'm turning the heat up high in my a nice fancy pot and I'm putting a cover on it. So I'm going to cover it until the sugar melts. I'm going to cover it until the sugar melts and then I'm going to uh, take the top off and cook it until the sugar caramelizes. It's been two or three minutes and now I'm going to take the top off to see whether the sugar and butter is melted. Yeah, perfect. So I'm just going to leave this like this so I can keep an eye on it so when it caramelizes I'll turn it off. We're trying to get the sugar to begin to turn yellow. Caramelizing means it kind of turns color and then eventually burns. But we want this to become a little bit golden before I put the pastry on it. Now I'm gonna roll out the pastry. Uh, so I'm going to sprinkle a little flour on the board like this. Sprinkle it on my little thing here. So I'm gonna take my little rolling pin and pound it gently to get it started. And then I'm going to turn it and press in the corners a little bit. And then I'm going to put flour on my rolling pin, pound it a little bit. Okay, so I've got the, the cracks kind of uh, coming together. Now I'm going to roll out the dough. So I start in the middle and I go down up. I start in the middle and push it down and go up when I get to the edge. And turn the dough quickly so it doesn't stick to the bottom of the counter. Okay, so a little flour on your rolling pin, a little flour on the pastry. Uh, not so much as a pizza maker. Start in the middle and roll up. Okay, you got it? Now, now you see the way this is turning kind of yellow? The, see the light yellow color in here? That's time to turn the pot off and let it cool for a few minutes. There are two ways of getting this pastry over onto the top of the apples. One is to fold it in quarters and the other is to roll it back on a rolling pin. I prefer rolling it up on a rolling pin. Okay, you keep your thumbs on the top. And you, t and you use this as a guideline and come over the edges like this. And then we're going to, this is a little hot still. The apples have just been cooking for a few minutes. So I need to get it in the oven really quickly so it doesn't melt the dough too quickly. And I just sh shove it in there, shove it in there, shove it in there, make a hole in the top. Okay, now I'm gonna stick it in a 375 oven for 20 minutes. Let's take our guy out of the oven and see how our Upside down apple tart is doing. Whoa, look at this. That one got a little overcooked in the oven, uh, but I like it anyway. So the story is that in France, they used to have this apple, the French apple tart has apples on the top. And there, used, and there was a couple of maiden women who had a little inn uh, near Orléans in France, and one of them came through the swinging door in her inn with her French apple tart, it fell on the floor. She went down on the floor, put it back on uh, her pan, 
put it, uh, some sugar and butter on it, ran it back into the oven, and came back into the dining room. And that's the origin of a tart tatin, a French apple tart. This is a little tricky to turn out, especially when it's hot. I've got a, um, a metal pan on the bottom. You could use any kind of pan. But you see how it doesn't, see how it's slipping off from the angle here? So what I, and you don't have to put a pod holder here, but you do have to put one over here. So what the best, is to try and center the pan like this with two pot holders set and always turn something away from you and you go down up down okay so i'm going to uh, try and center this on the pan and go down up down sometimes people get scared halfway through the down part now this one was a little too dark coming out of the oven so maybe i'm going to have trouble getting it out of the pan who cares we just hit it a little bit. There it goes. Okay, and maybe some of the apples are going to be stuck on the bottom of the thing. We don't care about that either. Mmm, look at that. We used to cover it sometimes with um, sliced almonds. So remember, if you want, if you're worried about it not looking perfect, then you can have some sliced almonds to put on top of it. I remember watching Julia Child do a, a tart tatin years ago on on PBS and uh, she said don't worry if the apples don't all come out look at that you got a choice you got light brown apples that uh, come out easily from the pan or dark apples that that stick to the bottom of the pan it looks pretty darn good to me this is a caramelized apple tart it's called a tart tatin from Aunt Mary in San Francisco for this recipe and more go to tantemarie.com slash recipes.